Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. My name is Brent Frain. I'm the host. The show is also known as PWD Allies Podcast. Check it out on your favorite app, wherever you find it best suited for you. Today, I have two guests joining me. I have MJ joining me, and I have Jeffrey Salisbury joining me. And, uh, well, MJ is going to be talking about the uh, federal provincial uh, transfer payments uh, accountability. And Jeffrey uh, is uh, joining me, and he's going to be talking about a, a petition that he wants to uh, put out there and let everyone know all about it. So first of all, I'm going to introduce both of you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, MJ and Jeffrey, for joining me. They're silent. <laughs> They're silent. <laughs> I was just trying to find my um, petition number. Okay, so yeah, so... I don't know about you guys, but when they came out with the insufficient CDB budget, <laughs> um, and then they started putting it back on the provinces, it really made me angry, like so angry. Because with the CDB around the corner, no province is going to give us any substantial increases. Like, why would they? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and then Randy Lemuro, which I really drives me crazy in the house, mentioned about the um, social transfer payments to the provinces. And mm -hmm. he's like, well, you know, we do give them social transfer payments. And it got me thinking, like, I did not even know this. And so I'm like, well, what does he mean by that? So I started to try to call and ask questions and nobody would tell me any answers. Oh. So I started a petition. And I may be way off, but from what the minimal I was told, I think I'm right on the money of what's going on. So I think the federal government is giving each province and territory money. I don't know if it's per capita, who's on disability, who's or what. Um, but they're giving each province and territory a certain amount of money, which PWD is paid out of. And I want to know that the dis disabled people are getting their fair share because there's <laughs> lots of social programs. Who's to say we're even getting how much the federal government is giving them for us? Mm. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense that they're not, because why would every province and territory be a different amount? Mm. To me, very, that doesn't make any sense. No, it makes no sense. Uh, that's a very good question. Well, unless they do it, unless they do it by per capita, though, right? They I mean, they oh, they, right. they could no, because per capita it'd be the same amount. Unless each province oh. is also contributing on a well, well, the staff. funny thing is, you, the Yukon actually gets the most money, and the Yukon has less population than a small city in Ontario. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is right. Yeah. Yeah. So even this petition, I'm hoping, will give us some clarity and some accountability as to what's happening with this money. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing is I've started a petition. I want... Um, the federal government to quit giving each province and territory their social transfer payment without them telling them what they're spending it on. Hmm. How much is going to each program? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And the petition is E4988. And hmm. so far, I've only got 362 signatures. And I think a lot of the problem is it's sponsored by Conservative, who is my MP in my area. And it's got nothing to do with the petition who's sponsoring it. So I just wanted people to know that. Um, and I hope people will sign it and share it because we need to, like, why wouldn't you want to know if you're getting screwed? <laughs> yeah. 
So the whole thing is based on transparency. You want more transparency in government. Um, yeah. Can you can you repeat that uh, number again, just for the uh, uh, people that are maybe viewing this back later? It was E four nine eight eight. Okay. And e it's going to collect um, signatures all summer long. Okay. So I'm hoping we have like thousands by summer. yeah. Well, let's go quickly over to Jeff too, because Jeff has also got his own uh, petition going on. So let's let's yeah. do a compare contrast with the two petitions. Yeah, that'd be so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, let, so let's go ahead, fine. Jeff, and you can introduce yours as well. Mine's going to be E5035. It's not open yet. It should be open tomorrow or Wednesday. It's just waiting on the translation to be done in French. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mine will be asking for several things. First, it's going to be asking to fast track Bill C403, which was introduced last week by the NDP, which would make it so that if you get a provincial benefit like ODSP or PWD, mm -hmm. uh, that you would automatically qualify for the disability tax credit, which in turn would automatically qualify you for the Canada Disability Benefit or RDSP accounts. Mm -hmm. So the second thing it's asking for is to bring the amount, the piddly little $200, up yeah. to the amount of GIS, which is about $1,000. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what they promised. They said that it, it is, would be yeah. modeled after the GIS. So I'm wondering why they didn't model the most important part after it, the money. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's quite a quite a uh, yeah you know dollar difference there. I mean, yeah, two hundred or a that's thousand. Big. That's like a they, lot. They advertise it as transformative, life changing, transformative <laughs> amount. Histor historical. <laughs> yes. Two hundred bucks. <laughs> but only to forty percent. Yeah, a very small amount. Yeah, let, let's. We talked about this off the air, and I've talked about it before. But let's let's again, for for the benefit of our viewing audience, let let's again talk about the math. Let's talk about yes. the the grade one, grade two math. Yeah. Um, if any of you want to want to jump in there, either well, MJ or, I, I like or Jeff, she, and talk she about never the mentions the two hundred. She always mentions the full amount that they've allocated for the six years because mm -hmm. six billion sounds like so yeah. much more than two hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, over six years too. Over yes, so, yeah, six years. So let, so let's contrast the six billion dollars with the actual with the with the math they're actually trotting out there now. It's so a it's huge difference. Seven years, you guys, because we had nothing the first year. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that yeah. was the big promise from Clara. It's gonna be twelve months, twelve yeah. months, and now it's yeah. twenty-four months. Well, and again, so let's compare contrast. So they're, they're basically saying it's a one billion dollar investment every year for the next six or seven years mm -hmm. and and so if it's one billion dollars a year you contrast that with the, with the numbers they're charting out now which is maybe a maximum of twenty five thousand people at well uh, i think twenty four hundred dollars thousand that they're mm -hmm. talking about is that's how much people it will lift to the poverty line when it gets to the maximum uh, in 2028 Right. Oh, okay. I think that's okay. what the twenty-five thousand means. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're from now. Yeah. So, so we even have to look forward to even less until then. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I was just going to do do the rough, the rough calculation of twenty-five thousand uh, people times mm. the twenty-four hundred dollar max only works out to sixty uh, sixty uh, million uh, oh. dollars. So uh, it's a big jump between the sixty million dollars and. Six billion. So I kind of want to, or one one billion dollars for the year. Sorry. So yeah. I kind of I kind of want to know where's the where, where where's the missing money from six sixty sixty what million to to one billion. Yeah. <laughs> where well, where is where is it? Yeah. Like, well, what did they do with it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. even um, oh, is it six hundred thousand or two? It was six hundred thousand, wasn't it? Yeah. Times twenty. Well, it, it started out. It started out as 1.5 million people it was going to help. And then it went down to 600,000 people. And then it's just gone down and down and down. And now it's, now it's down to well, 25,000. I, I think with the, 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 the 25,000, I don't think that's how many people are going to receive the benefit. I think that's how many are going to be at the poverty line by the end of like when it maxes out. Okay. Mm. So I think more people will be getting it. 
just that they won't be at the poverty line like they promised. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, if you have six hundred thousand getting twenty four hundred, that comes out to one point four four billion a year, which is more than what they promised. So we know that's not going to happen. Yeah. No. I think I think there's about three hundred thousand who have that tax credit as it is right now, maybe. I, I think that was a number I seen out there somewhere and that it's 600 that could qualify for it if they actually tried to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people don't even clear. bother because if you don't work, what good's the tax credit for you? Yeah. Right, right now anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it yeah. doesn't benefit everybody to, uh, get, I mean, and also, uh, you know, trying to get um, it filled out the, uh, the rigorous uh, it process. It is hard getting that done too and then have to hope that cra is going to say green light it and say yeah no problem yeah but the other thing you've talked about before too brent is uh you know it's good that the ndp has uh come out and they're they're wanting to um you know get rid of the stumbling block that is the dtc mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but you know why why was the whole uh Canada disability benefit approved in the first place. Like what or sorry, why why was the budget approved in the first place? If if, yeah. if they I think had... we all know why. They they didn't want that election to happen because if they had voted yeah. no and the budget yeah. didn't pass, that would call an election that they would definitely lose. Yes. Yeah. That that's that's kind of the reason we know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, and because like what I'm what I'm hearing uh, around the community and on social media in, in general is, uh, I mean the the government that's um, holding up you with the liberals, uh, yeah. federal liberals, it's saying, well, you voted, you know, you voted for for two hundred dollars, you voted for it, and I guess people are feeling very um, anxious uh, and and rightfully so, right? Because I mean uh, the CDB was promised <laughs> four years ago. I mean. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, if you go back to like nine years ago, yeah, I mean, we're going to lift everybody out of poverty. But four years ago, technically, the CDB was promised. And then I guess when $200 was saying, well, we're going to give, uh, give uh, you know, up to 40% of the population, you know, $200 was $66. And isn't it funny, they, they didn't even day. try to ask for an amendment. Yeah. They didn't even yeah. try. Well, that's the like part the I'm block about. asked for amendments to things that they didn't like. They didn't get them, but they didn't. Yeah. Like they didn't even try for the Canada Disability Benefit. Why didn't they say raise it to this amount? Mm -hmm. and they could have voted no. Then at least yeah. we could have said they tried at least. Well, and it, it, it's not like they don't know what the poverty, what a poverty level is. I mean, there's lots of different calculations you could use. Right. But there's there's one or two there's one or two basic ones, you know, that they tried out all the time. So so it's not like they don't know. Well, gee, what is poverty level? They they know what it is. Well, in twenty uh, well in twenty twenty two, I I believe I know uh, uh, Jeff Leggett uh, mentions about the poverty level. Um, the LICO amount was twenty. It was twenty one oh seven, right? So I mean, right there, that was in uh, twenty twenty one. So now, as years go by, as inflation ticks up, that number is now you're you're looking at probably twenty at least twenty five twenty six hundred dollars. I would think by now because in in 2020, uh, when um, when the federal government had amounts that served, right when it first came out, it's saying yeah. that two thousand dollars was the bare minimum <coughs> that people needed, and that's not even anyone who doesn't have disabled ability, person, a regular person. Yeah, yeah that's without a disability, that is the bare minimum. But that that amount is not even including like your accommodation, your shelter portion, right? So that's not even really in that formula at all. I mean, or barely, you know, probably very more marginal amount. Of, so well, that was the bare minimum. So when PWD across the country or um, provinces that don't even have that, it's like a slap in the face or it's like egg in the face. It's like saying, well, you deserve to have less uh, because, uh, you know, we're not even meeting that poverty level. Um, now with a meeting uh, that Jeff had with the minister in BC, um, and myself uh, and Sonia, we, we all had a meeting and uh, the minister had mentioned that they're going to that she's going to go with the federal counterparts because MBM is what the federal counterparts wants to go with. Well, as we all know, MBM is actually the lesser amount than LICO. Uh, mm -hmm. And so now with that $200 <laughs> announcement, that's going to go to only 40 percent. They're not even meeting that that 
at MBM, yeah. which is only a hundred something dollars difference. So it's like you, way you, down al- there. you always know, you always know that that any government's going to want to go with the lower amount. So yeah, so that in itself is not shocking. Like no. like I've always said. I mean, you know, uh, when uh, Sheila Malcolmson was was supposedly in talks with the federal federal government, she was mm-hmm. always saying the MBM right, and and she and so having that as the as knowledge then um you we kind of thought that that the that the cdb would be targeted at around maybe 600 or 700 dollars a month as yeah, as, the, as the top up because even that would have been a decent starting point that would be better a, than 200 yeah. that would be a decent yeah. starting point right so uh, like that's what i kind of figured it might be targeted at because that that would have been right at the poverty line then if it was somewhere between six or seven hundred dollars for bc anyway for bc anyway Mm -hmm. that would have that would have lifted everybody up to to around the party poverty line like right right at it close to it yeah Uh, and isn't it funny how the amounts 200 across the board even though yeah yeah. different provinces need different amounts like how is it 200 across the board yeah yeah yeah, exactly. I, I I remember um one one minister we had on uh, Neil. Oh, this is going back a ways, and uh, the, the minister that who was actually in charge of the ministry uh, was in government had said at the time was that he was concerned that um that the amount would be around five hundred dollars a month, oh. which wouldn't be enough. And mm-hmm. well, I mean, this is like way lower than that. Like this is like yeah. two hundred dollars. So not that's even pretty, yeah, it's like yeah, not even. Out. And that's it. That's the other stupid thing, too, is, um, you know, again, I kind of understand why the provinces want to maintain control of the of the so social net or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's it's just bananas because, I mean, mm-hmm. like you always say, like when you have a disability, it doesn't go away. And it's like you just get more. Like, disability. But like the way it's set up, it's like if you cross the border into another province or if you go, if you go across the country, let's say, let's say I went from BC to, to Ontario, for example, Mm -hmm. like then for example, I have to start again from scratch and, 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 and and be a Joe blow and have to prove my disability all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like magically, as soon as I cross the border, somehow my disability gets wiped out and I have to, Re- and, and and you'd have to be you know. living here in Ontario for three months before you could even get the health card. Yeah, yeah. And it's then just, good luck finding a doctor here. There's no it's, doctors. It's in so Ontario, bananas that there's no BC, yeah. there's no continuity between the provinces at all. It's like you know they why, just, why isn't there a transfer process in place? Like yeah, yeah. I want to move Got here. It. Can I just transfer from the ODSP to this one? I always yeah, just it, say they're it, throwing. It, they're throwing old. pink unicorns at a dartboard. They're like, here's like a pink unicorn. Like, throw it at the, you know, just keep throwing shit at the d- dartboard and see what sticks. And it's like, oh, that's good enough. Well, it should be, it should be automatically like your your file should automatically be transferred automatically, like a universal one. Um, and it's just like streamlining to get the. Um, it's like this you, you would think all the provinces would sit down, come up with one application that yeah. works for everywhere, has and one unit. set of rules, and there's a transfer process in place that you can move from ear to ear to ear to ear. And yeah. it's yeah. not a problem as long she as does. you're still in Canada. They'll never well, go for that because again. Yeah. BC will think everybody will come here because it's warmer. <laughs> but I'm, I, and, and also yeah. too, and also too, Brent, you always talk about the, uh, the PWD versus PWD or disabled versus disabled. And yeah. that's so true too. It's like, you know, it's like this. Uh, we can we can talk about this more on on tomorrow's show too. But I, uh, you know, I was uh, giving the example. I've given the example before of of uh, you know when we talk about subsidized housing, where mm-hmm. some people get the subsidized housing and some don't. And I gave the ex- I gave the example. So it's like maybe ten to twelve percent get the subsidized housing, and the rest of us are paying market right. And mm-hmm. then I gave the example of uh, you know McDonald's and said, well, imagine if only twelve percent of McDonald's customers got hamburgers. But at but at the same time, I realized my my metaphor is kind of flawed because mm-hmm. that's assuming that's assuming that um, it's going to be a twelve percent uh, different 
people of every time. In actual fact, it's your the governments are are targeting the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same ten to twelve percent are getting are getting the reward. Yeah, the same customer. It's it's the same customers getting getting the hamburgers all the time. Yeah, and it's and it's the same. It's the same ninety or eighty eight to ninety percent getting screwed every time. So it's right. like you know if if you're this if you're this kind of the, uh, the I don't know if you want to even call that the elite the elite yeah. part part of the disabled. If you're in the the elite part of the disabled of the ten percent, yeah. you get your hamburger or you get your you get your subsidized housing. But if you're in the crap part of the disabled of the uh, you know other ninety percent, you don't get your hamburger all the time. You never get your hamburger. And you'll never get your subsidized housing, so yeah. so so that's that's the, that's the true metaphor, and that just sucks, you well, know. And and that's, and that's not I, anywhere close to good government policy. I'm sorry, it's it's yeah. it's a it's the cluster it, beep, you well, know. That's, that's everything. You I know. know that uh, bothers me too, because I mean that kind of leads into the segue for tomorrow's show that we'll be we'll be talking on that one is. Um, you know, like subsidized housing, it's like saying, well, okay, so the government's going to be building all these nonprofits, all these other housing. And I've said it many times, and I'll keep saying it, perfect. Build, build, build. We need lots of housing built. Great. Yeah, that's awesome, right? There's 38 new, uh, 38 communities, not new communities, 38 communities that are going to have um, housing built. But the devil's in the detail. Who's it going to go to? How much is it going to be affordable? Like for who? Is it PWD? Are you going to get it for your shelter rate? Well, now here's the thing: is that if it's under a BC housing umbrella for nonprofits, if it's for profit sector, nonprofit sector, um, if it's in market housing, say it's a uh, big developer, a big corporation, now there's a lot of stipulations that need to be met under uh, policies. Now, now it's the policies that are the problem, right? The housing is great. It's it's uh, now who's going to qualify for that? So they, like, we'll be talking more on on the other show on that uh, for sure. Yeah. But when it comes down to one of my concerns that I hear all the time, um, Neil and uh, and my my guests that are on today and people listening to the show is people in the community. They are worried. Like they say to me, "Yeah, that's great. All the housing announcements, but it's the policies that that they cringe." I know the one guy, he said he wakes up and he had almost a nightmare of the one night. He woke up and he thought that that he couldn't get out the door because it was there was no door handle on his door. He thought he was locked in there. And they said, well, and the only word on, on the door was, you need to follow policies. And I, I said, well, wow. He, so he told me a little bit about his dream. He didn't remember everything. But what really bothers him is, uh, I guess, is his subconscious was telling him that, yeah, like he's worried that, uh, he wants to get cheaper housing, but he's worried that if he goes in there and that his roommate, um, that his roommate, uh, that well, he has two roommates, uh, that both of them, if they all three of them go into into that subsidized housing, they won't be allowed to, because it has to be one file, one file, yeah. DC housing. So either the guy leaves, it's his his roommate, or she leaves. Now, if the government, I don't know how they would look at that, because mm -hmm. they're gonna still gonna say one file. So it'll be one income. Mm. So that really, like it actually, it will hurts the disabled people. Um, I, for me, I want to see people housed, not unhoused. <laughs> so yeah. um, I think like that policy needs to change that way. And it needs to be based on individual, not household income. Yeah. And, and we'll cover that. We'll cover this tomorrow because that, that's yeah. our, our topic tomorrow will be, uh, it'll be love, love and relationships and disability. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what, so that's on, what on that's what the topic will be to tomorrow but yeah i mean it's it's this idea of like you know the, the way the provincial policy is set up it's like it's almost like how, how dare you how dare you try to uh have a good life and try to better yourself it's, it's odd that's one policy that all of the disability programs follow is that you can't live with somebody without your money being taken away yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then and, too, and uh, it's funny, too, in Ontario, when he raised the amount that a disabled person can make working to a thousand dollars, if you have a spouse, he yeah. left that part at 200. So if the spouse is working, it's only 200. But if you yourself are working, you can make a thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then if uh, then 
if they're there, they actually claw off the rest of it right off. And so mm -hmm. you're, you're never any further ahead. Actually, you could be worse off. Yeah. And then it's, like, it's like they want everybody to be alone. <laughs> yeah. I have a weird situation. <clears throat> I live with an adult son who's on disability and he can't work at all. So it's just the two of us. And because we're not married, I can't make his 16200 So I'm supporting him as well with the little amount I can make. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I called them about it. And they're like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's the that thing is they just keep going with the, the policy because yeah. they believe that their policies are doing good for people. I mean, my pink unicorn behind me uh, would disagree with that. I mean, they, they run yeah. a buck where... The, um, the know, broken policy is fine. It's written. It's written in the law. It's they, fine. They say equalized. And how many times that I've seen posts uh, on social media, people talk about CPP, about it being clawed off. There was uh, there was one person like, who was like me. Well, yeah, and there was there was actually uh, there was somebody that was actually in the USA um, had posted about it too. But there's a little bit different than the CPP that Canada has. But the same situation. Um, and but in Canada, they actually escalated even worse because they actually clawed off uh, dollar yeah, for dollar. ODSP follows that same rule, dollar for dollar. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And they and, and it's bad because this person was um, in an accident. It was a drunk driver who who had hit her. Uh, she is now paralyzed. She can never never function uh, how she was before. And then she got more disabilities on top of that disability, as I always say. People will always get more disabilities as we get older. Rather, they're going to be invisible, physical, combination. There's so many, and so I'm not even going to narrow down all of those. But anyway, long story short is um, dollar for dollar taken off. And so now the person had worked for many years, like 34 years had worked. And now all that money gets taken off, off the provincial, yeah. uh, BC takes it over dollar for dollar off, off of her. Like, really? Like, so what was the point in that person working? Because they, they say the government treats it as unearned income. How can that yeah. be unearned income? You earned it. And income of last and income of last resort too, yeah, which because is... the employer takes it off your paycheck every mm -hmm. every two weeks. They take it off CPP deductions, right? So now what? Yeah. It's not un, as unearned income. And so all the what I want to see going forward another policy: no more clawbacks. Stop the clawbacks and any clawbacks that you have done, government. You need to retroactive back. Like you need to now mm -hmm. go back and actually fix the problem. You can make amends. It, it can easily be done. It's not difficult. The, and the, let's the disability community, we can teach you how to do that. It's been almost eleven years for me, and, right? And yep. in and in eleven years, uh, in my situation, uh, the prov provincial government has clawed back from me over seventy one thousand dollars of income that. Um, you know, I inherited as a spouse. This was this was income that was paid into, yeah, by an employer and by my wife. It was, it, you know, basically like you know, for all intents and purposes, it's it's like a savings fund, right? It's like a it's mm -hmm. like a savings account, and 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 the provincial governments are rating are rating people's private personal it's money that you should be getting anyways if you hadn't been paying into it. Like it yeah. should have been in your pocket already. Yeah, it, it, exactly. it's, it's money that was in my wife's pocket or in, in my pocket. And because uh, it's money that we work for. But mm -hmm. for some reason, you, you, you it gets turned into a CPP. And then the, the government says, the provincial government says, oh, it's our money now. You know, you, you didn't work for it. The, the, the employers didn't pay into it. You didn't pay into it. Too bad. You know, wow. in, in order for in order for our uh provincial policies to make sense, our disability policies to make sense. All of the policies need to focus on the fact that the reason for their existence is to, is to support a disability, right? Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. that's what the- You have to line the pockets of the government. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. but, but what, what I was gonna say is like uh, the the PWD assistance here in BC and, mm -hmm. and in, in Ontario, it's called ODSP, right? But yep. the- in uh, here, it's called uh, BC. It's called the the PW income assistance. The reason for that is because we have disabilities. So that amount should be should should be set aside because we have disabilities, right? It's not. It's not. It's not 
doesn't magically it shouldn't magically disappear once my wife dies and it's like oh well now that your wife died you're getting all this money you know now so so now you're now you're um now your disability doesn't matter anymore. That that's not how the policy should work. The policy should be: if you have a disability, here's the amount for the. Dis We're going to accept the fact that you have a disability, and here's amount. Here's an amount for your disability. If you get any other other income, who cares? This is the amount that we're giving to you because you have a disability, and that's end of story, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and not not all this thing of like well. Because you, because this shit happened to you now, sorry, we're gonna claw this off off you now. It's just so stupid. You know, MJ, um, like way back in the mid nineteen nineties, I'll go back in the time machine. Um, yeah, Doctor Brown, I borrowed your time machine. Thank you very much. <laughs> go back in time here, Marty. Marty will Marty will drive it. Anyway, I'm just I'm just trying to be funny here, but so we go back into the early nineteen nineties, uh, just for a moment in time. And uh, Neil knows where I'm going to go with this one, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. So in BC, B, uh, persons with disabilities had a pension. It used to be a pension, uh, just like seniors. They have uh, you know, their, their GIS site, I mean, guaranteed income supplement. So it was a pension. And then all of a sudden, Pink Unicorn came along. They just started growing and they just started just uh, multiplying. And basically that uh, pension just disappeared. It got turned upside down into the income of la uh, income of last resort, mm -hmm. means tested, just yeah. like regular welfare. Now, because the the rates haven't been kept up with inflation, the buying power now it's like it uh, seems like welfare. We we I did a segment just the other day in the grocery store. Um, it was we were looking for milk, and uh, Sonia said, "Well, it just it feels like welfare." And I, I was like, "Well, yeah, well, no, it's disability." She goes, "Well." It, it feels like welfare because the, it's, the way it's all the, the same, it's all the same. And, and then, you know, it kind of stems back to about accountability of saying, well, how much, where are these transfer payments going? Like the rates should be no less than, I mean, by now, I mean, they should be way up. I mean, I, I mean, no less than poverty level, whatever that poverty line is, because it keeps changing. Right. But the standard of living is what I, what I want to call it a standard of living um because people put the money back into the economy you give them the money they're going to put it back into the economy in general uh and uh, so yeah like i, I kind of wonder like is it going to like food programs like uh, you know like food banks is it going to um i don't know where it's going to that's why i'm kind of wondering too and so i'm glad that uh, you brought that topic up because it's so important mm -hmm. here i lost you <laughs> yeah um, so I wanted to bring some things up with the social transfer accountability stuff. Okay, so um, there's 144,000 approximately people on disability in British Columbia. There's, I want to find that quote, just give me a second here. Uh, okay. The bottom line is that the poverty in BC presents a direct 2.2 to 2.3 billion annually the cost to society overall is considerably higher, 8.1 to 9.2 billion. So Sonia Firstino said that it costs BC government $54,000 for each person to keep them in poverty, which you times that by the amount of 144,000 comes to pretty close to 9.2 billion. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about mostly people on disability. 144,000 now. Yeah, I remember that number used to yeah. be at 120. So they're spending 9.2 billion a year in British Columbia to keep people in poverty. Wow. That's wow. what you're spending. So now, what's 144,000? I'm just curious. Ties, what do we get? 1535? Uh, 221 million. You opt out of the bus pass, yeah. 221 so, million, that's it? 221 million. Wow, that's oh, like peanuts. That's that's wow, a month. sorry, that's, that's a month. Um, oh, a month. Okay, well, still, that's still billion. peanuts. Two point six billion. So ninety-two times minus twenty-six. They're spending about six point eight billion more taxpayer dollars to keep us in poverty. If they would just bring us up to the poverty line, they would save all that money. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. 
And the other thing I wanted to mention, here's just a few ways that they spend money to keep us in poverty. Shelters, food banks, safer programs for seniors, because seniors are supposed to be the federal government responsibility. Seniors going mm -hmm. into homes because they can't afford rent. This is happening. Costs associated with increased crime, lawyers, court costs, police officers, incarceration stays, security, increased costs to the medical system, doctors, ambulances, hospital stays, nurses, cleaning staff, the lab costs if they have to take a blood sample, social workers, and I'm sure there's so many more. But these are all ways that they're spending money with that $9.2 billion that they wouldn't have to if they would just bring us up to the poverty line. And oh. this is the stuff we need to make known to the general public. Because on the news this morning, I heard how every mentally ill person in British Columbia is drug addicted. <laughs> like, oh. that's the other thing. It's the stigma. Yeah. yeah. Right? And this government who's feeding that stigma. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just the idea that, that uh, you know, PWD is just... A, another one of the problem child you know we yeah. just get lumped in with it's another problem child for the for the mm -hmm. provincial government you know it's like mm -hmm. you know and it's just it's so it's just stupid so that's why i want to know because the social transfer payment from the federal government is going to pay for a lot of these programs including mm -hmm. pwd and i want to know how they can justify that and mm -hmm. that's why my petition's there. And I really hope people start signing it because it's, it's kind of like dead in the water. No one's signing yeah. it. <laughs> we'll get it uh, We'll get it pumped out there. Uh, send me the link and I will uh, again and I'll, I'll, well, I'll uh, put it out there. Well, talking about accountability, this is getting a little bit off topic, but not really. But I think accountability is huge, though. So this is this is why I'm 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 broaching the the topic here. Do you remember when uh, Gordon Campbell? Uh, became premier here in BC. It was it was uh, it was in the two thousands, right? It was uh, two thousand two thousand one two thousand one. That was that's when he that became year. premier, and and it was a, a big thing. Like they 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 ever it was the BC Liberals. They advertised. They they, they were proud of the fact almost uh, because what what they would do is they would have their their question period and stuff in front of the cameras. Remember they would have. They would do all the all of their legislative stuff in front of the cameras, and and then like um, Gordon Campbell and other insiders would would actually say after that was done, they would go away in in a separate room and actually talk about you know uh, business for real. Like it was all, almost like the whole uh, legislature stuff was just dog and pony show stuff, and 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 it's like. You know whatever was whatever was decided in the legislature and and the and the question period that was all just like smoke and mirrors like dog and pony stuff and like we're, we're gonna go in our secret back room and actually hammer out you know what we really want to do as a party and and screw everybody else in in the legislature and and i mean i remember that was a thing and and they were actually proud of the fact that they were doing that you know. I remember. I remember back then, um, Neil, because uh, it was uh, just after. It was a couple years after the uh, government got got in at that time, and that's right when they were doing a guilt campaign. On how does the government save money? So they looked around areas where they could cut. They cut on education. They cut on health care. They cut persons with disabilities. They started going through files and saying, "Well, let's see who we can reassess and who we can start making saving money on." Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, they started going through. I know I, I was one of them. Huh. I was yeah. one of them. We got it backfired on them. And uh, my doctor was fuming, pissed. He says, did your disability go away, Brent? I'm like, uh, no. Then why am I wasting? Why are they wasting my, my time? Uh, so, yeah. And, and so he says, well, he's going to do a lawsuit against them. And next thing you know, I had two ladies knocking at my door. Huh. But three months later, though, it was, but I had to wait three months yeah. and no income, no income whatsoever. And I was not living, I not living at home. I, I was renting at a place and uh, they were threatening to basically uh, kick me out if they didn't get their money quick. Right. So uh, it was, it was a bad time. Um, we had a bus strike at the time too. So uh, mm -hmm. I had, didn't have a bus pass. So. Well, I, re I always remember Gordon Campbell because, because uh, that was the time that I was working for the provincial government. 
I was working uh, at, in the Ministry of uh, Transportation, and he slashed and burned a whole bunch yeah. of ministers. Like, we actually closed up our entire office mm -hmm. in, in uh, New Westminster. It was New Westminster Burnaby office. And he, cl he closed down the entire office, and everybody lost their job. He was one of those premiers. He literally thought that he could do the entire, like, the entire mm -hmm. government – of, but by himself, <laughs> you know, like a one man, literally one man show. He thought, well, I'll just close down everything and do everything Plus. myself, Plus. you know? Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. it was one of those egomaniac people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's, you know, some of the, uh, some of the other MLAs who came on board after, after the fact, um, you know, they, they, uh, they felt bad. They, I mean, you could tell personally, like they, they we weren't, we weren't part of that, you know, and, they believe in uh, getting the rates increase. And I mean, across party lines, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of MLAs, there's a lot of MPs, MPPs, wherever you are in the country, that they, some of them do really want to see um, people with disabilities, our rates increased. Um, now, I mean, some people will say, well, obviously the, the current government, Brent, is, is not doing it. What I'm saying is that there are, there are ones out there that really do, they really do care to see things change in a positive way. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, it comes down to accountability. It comes down to how she holds the current government to account and they promise something they need to deliver on it. There needs to be accountability. Where's the money going? Where's the money going? Who's sitting on all the money and get it out there. Just get it out there get the proper amount out to each jurisdiction, get it out to people's hands. Yeah. I mean, I exactly, uh, MJ, like you are right on that. It's like accountability. It's, um, where is the money going? How much money is coming from feds going to provincial? Let's all say, let's all say this in unison. Show me the Show money. Me the money. <laughs> Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> well, I remember a few years ago, I believe it was Ontario that Doug Ford was sitting on a shit ton of money. Yeah. yeah. He's still that sitting on a bunch. I think he's still sitting oh, on the money. He's still <laughs> sitting on it. How, how big yeah. is that? Oh, oh, did, you, did you see the latest thing he's wasting money on? Yeah, the liquor uh, stores, right? The liquor yes, liquor stores. yes. Yeah. It's like up to a billion almost. Yeah. To get out of the contract a year early. Yeah. He couldn't wait a year. Yeah. Because yeah, why, so then he can sell beer. Because why wait? Why wait when you can spend spend a billion Walmart, dollars? Then. Yeah. Yeah, it's meanwhile, like, I heard there was a strike or something. Uh, it was in Ontario. Wasn't there a strike that's going on? They voted in favor of going on a strike for the liquor, the liquor board or something? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. But I, oh, maybe there was something I'll have to pull maybe. it up again. On that. I, I don't yep. really follow liquor stuff too much. I just neither see that because he's blowing so much laughing. money on this stupid yeah. thing to get no. beer in regular yeah. stores. Yeah. As soon as I heard it, I was just like, wow. Well, I was like, <laughs> well, and, and I, I think mean, what a billion dollars could have did for ODSP. <laughs> and, exactly. and, and, and I mean, I don't mean to shit on people that like their vices either. I mean, this, this isn't going to be a show about that, but no. Think about this for a second, though, is that you, you have you have the government that's in the business of selling booze mm -hmm. and selling cigarettes, which we know is not is not healthy. I mean, like, you know, you, you have wine or something in moderation. Wine is fine. Like, you know, even in biblical times, they drank wine. It's not a, not a big not a big deal. Right. Um, but I mean, a lot of people get in a lot of really unhealthy uh, situations with by overdoing their booze and mm -hmm. by overdoing their cigarettes and all other kinds of vices. I mean, the the governments are involved in the in two big vices: cigarettes and booze, and and the cost taxes and that the, make the cost the cost up to the to the public. Well, don't, on, don't forget about weed. On, on, yeah. Why are you not mentioning drugs? Well, <laughs> drugs too, drugs too, but but. Uh, but I'm just saying all that is, it's a direct cost on our healthcare system. It's like they're supporting all these vices and getting all this tax dollars. And yet they're like blowing it on, you know, it's all being blown on our healthcare budgets because people are, like you said, overdosing or, or they're, they're, they're drunk and they're killing people in their, in their cars because they're wh mm. whatever. Right. I'm, I'm being, yeah. I'm going off on a tangent, but I don't really care. But, you know, I've never even considered that. So you think MAID and the drugs are also coming out of the social program money? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. exactly it. I mean, yeah. you know, you give people enough enough resources overall, 
you're going to put less strain on the healthcare system. Well, if they just, if they just kill us all, then they have then they have no money to put in. So well, 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 we need to know where the money's from. Where yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Was well, I think there was a somebody had put a graph out one time. It showed you the stats that the government says if we if we follow this, we're going to save um, hundreds of millions of dollars. If if somebody goes and uses made, they're going to yeah. save. Hundreds they actually, of yeah, they actually dollars. published that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was it was really sick. It's like look yeah. at all look at all the money we're saving if everybody if everybody gets killed off. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I think we got the suicide hotline last Christmas, so they can steer us to May. Yeah. Wow. It's nuts. You know, and it, it really puts some doctors in a really bad uh, bad situation too, right? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, for so many reasons. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just they they so the system is just so messed up, right? In so many ways. And we just have to hold them accountable and do the right thing and let them understand that like things don't have to be the way that they are. Uh, and I mean, they have to listen to all the testimonials. I mean, I mean, looking through Huma, all the testimonies, all the, all the research that was done. And then they come through and say, well, here, here you go. Here's, here's 200 dollars, <laughs> 40% of you. Yeah. There you Isn't go. It's funny anyway. how they said all these rules were going to come yeah. from the regulations that we haven't oh, even yeah. seen yet. Yeah. 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 So where'd okay. they get these rules from if they haven't done the regulations yet? Pink unicorns. In other what? words, they're they're done. They just don't <laughs> want to show us them because they're gonna, probably going to piss us off even more. Well, you know, I I find it's so ironic is that the the government doesn't want to show come up with all the information. Uh, you know, it was an MP Mike Maurice uh, Mike Morris uh, from uh, Kitchener, Ontario, had yep. said the minister. Show me the all the information. Show me the name. Show me all that information, and then mm -hmm. they just spin it around and blah blah. blah. Yeah. And, and it took you know, her weeks and weeks yeah. to come up with that bullshit answer. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like it's like and, just, and, and they still trot they still trot out the thing of six billion dollars, the largest line item, six billion. It's, it's historical. It's historical. Yeah. 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 Nothing Which about is stupid us because us. they spent more than that on some stupid battery plant thing. So oh, how is it more than that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those batteries are worth more than the than the vehicle. <laughs> Go figure. So yeah. The NDP is getting quite slimy as well. I don't know if anyone's really noticed or they've kind of just slid under the uh, radar that last March, three months ago, they were supposed to come out with the new rules and regulations for PWD, which they did a bunch of um Oh, yes. Zoom calls on and all that last year, all the surveys and all the stuff. And now she's sitting there putting down nothing about us without us. She's like commenting that. And I'm like, don't even. I told her, don't even. You yeah. have done all these uh, meetings and you've come up with nothing that we yeah. want. Nothing. Like, I think Clara had promised to have those draft regulations out by February. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, that that the one months. conservative lady had brought that up in the Huma meeting uh, that it was supposed to be out in February, and we're now in like June. It yeah. just hasn't said, shown yeah, us yeah. anything. Forced us all to work. That's what they were doing in BC. They were they did their little C sixty nine bill thing, and Sonia first you know, called them out about how it says that all oh, we're going to be uh, accountable to working, doing a working whatever they called it. I can't remember. So yeah. if you can work or not. Um, and then all of a sudden, she doesn't come up with the new rules and regulations. They've been delayed. Yeah, yeah. There was a bill in in uh, BC. There was a bill seven uh, that it's came seven, out. Yeah. yeah, and I, I know that uh, there was a uh, one of the members of opposition and somebody within the actual current government that used to be the minister for mm -hmm. what Sheila is doing now mm -hmm. had said um, like the is a lot of. Uh, information in there that uh needs to be changed and wow i thought interesting right uh and i said well there's many pwd that can't work or they're very limited on what you can do and i said but the other minister had had uh, had mentioned to uh to us that oh no 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 it, they're going to be forcing every pwd to go to work and so those two have always got uh, knocker heads right the opposition government there and the other <laughs> the other minister was there and i was right there and i went uh, yeah, yeah, you guys like, okay, like, <laughs> what is it? They're like, well, technically, no, it, it is, but it isn't. I go, what do you mean? It isn't, it isn't. Well, the fact is that the regulations are there, but they're not enforced. Well, I mean, so then that option is still there.
right? That option mm-hmm. is still there to try and push people because, I mean, any future government could then go and amend that and actually change it and make it a regulation. Again, there needs to be accountability. There needs to be something that states that any government going forward uh, needs to follow a certain standard. And that standard, um, it just needs to be met. Um, and listening to lived experience stories, listening to what people are telling them what they want. Uh, and it comes to me, it seems like it's just policy based, right? It's all based on that. It's They're just going through and amending stuff and then redacting certain things and then photocopy and then changing it as they go along. So there needs to be a standard in place that any government in power needs to follow a guideline of you're disabled. That you're, you're, it's like it should be a pension. It's like a senior. That's yeah. your income. Now, if you make extra money, hey, great. If you can't, this mm-hmm. is what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, my yeah, but- point was, she did all these meetings and Zoom yeah. meetings, everything last year. Mm-hmm. And she didn't listen to us anyway. And then she quotes nothing about us without us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. The federal government. No, I mean, that that's what that's what I don't like either is like, uh, you know, when they when the governments reach out for for input from, you know, like, you know, I've hmm. I said before, like I, I actually took part when when uh, Shane Simpson had that big, uh, uh, you know, public forum to to, hmm. to 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 seek input on the on the new B.C. accessibility plan member. Right. And, I'm a- and, and I took part in that. And but it's so it was so um, orchestrated to begin with. There was really no input per se. It was like if you went off book, whatever they provided in the pamphlet, it was like you know don't talk about rates, only talk about what's in the in the pamphlet. You know don't don't talk about rates and increasing the rates. And it's like you know so they can say that they want input, but again if we go if we go back to the the CDB example, I mean. The federal government got tons of input from the disabled community, oh, tons, and yes. and and like a shitload, oh, and yeah. and tell me where tell me where that input is now, like who from the disabled community asked for two hundred bucks? Mm-hmm. Nobody did. Nobody. One hundred and thirty people asked for it to be solely delivered through the DCC. Yeah, I call bullshit on that. Unless one hundred thirty yeah. liberal and peace filled that thing out and said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nobody, like nobody. Million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And, well, and the other thing that's funny the is but they didn't answer, so we went with that because there was a majority of them didn't answer. I forget which question it was. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that's silly is apparently she hasn't even met with the minister here in Ontario to talk about oh. clawbacks. The mm. biggest province in Canada, and she hasn't met with that minister. Right. Oh. Yeah, I I remember uh, was it Ka- Carla Contro had claimed when she was the minister that uh, oh that he'd already with met counter- with everybody. I met with all my counterparts. You did. Well, then why is it now? All, why was but on that all- list of where who she's met with that she gave the mic? Ontario yeah. isn't on that list. No, nope. and there was and, a blank. And she's not was meeting a- with page. PEI until this month supposedly wow <laughs> so she hasn't even done every, she hasn't even met with all of the provinces yet mm, to talk about work ahead yeah 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 it's and be as far as i've seen nova scotia is the only province who has said outright that they won't claw it back oh yeah, yeah. I, w- I wonder That's if she did a zoom on that one instead of actually traveling over to see them in person that would save a lot of money too yeah. I yeah. Know why you can be sure she's NDP going there in person. Federal NDP. Yeah, I, it reminds me. It reminds me of a time. Um, you know, you're talking about rates and uh, meetings. Um, I remind me of a of a time. Uh, Shane Simpson, uh, Neil, and uh, MJ, uh, and of course with Jeffrey. I mean, you're in Ontario, but um, we had the minister at the time here who had set up meetings. And wanted to hear consultation from from uh, you know people uh, within the community, persons with disabilities. And every time he have a meeting, I, I we'd be there. We just boom, you know, hammer away. And and again, it was it was almost like scripted. It was almost like saying you can answer you can answer once ask one question. You can ask one question, and it had to be tailored exactly with what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. And it was talking about are you going to raise the rates of shelter? And the other question was, are you going to tie it to inflation? 
no and no. And and then there was people inside inside the meeting, MJ, um, had and the rates, I mean, our I mean, as we know, rents were a lot lower back then. I mean, they were still high, but they were lower. They were still reach like somewhat reachable. And the fact is that someone had said, Well, I have five people living living in my household. Oh, okay. You gotta do what you gotta do to make it happen. That was the response. But the minister then had said he wanted to see things change going forward. He wanted to see the shelter rate completely demolished, gone, out of there. He wanted to send one, one flat amount called a brand new name, whatever it is, social services or whatever it is, and uh, just have one, one name, like instead of support, shelter, call it whatever it is. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that going forward. And that's kind of uh, after when they had launched a basic income pilot and that didn't take off the ground, unfortunately. Um, I think the, the minister meant well, really meant well at the time. Uh, he wanted to see things changed. Again, I think the policies, the system, wouldn't let him do the changes that he wanted to do. Um, and his predecessor, I mean, I mean, going, I mean, well, prede predecessor going forward, however, I mean, they tried everything. And then that was Nicholas Simons. He tried and Sheila Malcolmson, uh, she's mm -hmm. in office now until they call election. Who knows who's going to be the minister after her? I yeah. guarantee you she won't be because they always <laughs> change the ministers as they go forward, right? Yeah. Uh, I think her, her days are numbered. Bye-bye. Like, well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't I don't yeah. envy anybody. I don't envy anybody in that position because I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of the file where everybody goes to die. You know, what it, once you go to once you take on that file, it's like, you know, your lifespan in that role is not very high. Right. Well, we, we know that lie, though. they don't have to lie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you want to see a bit more truth there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I it's, mean, it's I, funny. The minister who was in charge of social services here before the current one was yeah. actually a doctor. Right. Yes. So yeah. It's like you're a doctor and you're willing to stand by and let people starve. Yeah. And you're a doctor. <laughs> do, do no harm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Let's don't put strain on the medical system. No, 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 yeah. no. We, we got to raise the rates. Well, I'm a doctor, but you know, the repercussions, what happens yeah go figure as long as i get my paycheck i can look the other way <laughs> we've yeah, been going yeah. we've been going for about an hour uh brent i didn't know if you wanted to wrap up now or if you wanted to um, uh, reintroduce the uh the petitions again uh yeah yeah we could just kind of go and summarize about the petition numbers again and uh we'll we'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll we'll okay. wrap her down here um until until our next uh meetup time uh, with both of you uh this has been great mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll start with you, MJ, um, your petition number. <laughs> so the petition is E4988, and it will be running all summer. And it's so the provinces have to give the federal government accountability as to how they spend the social transfer money that they get from the federal government, which I believe is where the PWD money comes from. Mm -hmm. So please sign and share all summer. Okay. And then awesome. Jeff? Awesome. So mine's at E5035. It should be open either tomorrow or probably Wednesday. Just waiting on the French translation. Mm -hmm. uh, should be open until October around the 15th, I think. And mm -hmm. it's asking for to fast track bill C403 to make it automatic to get the disability tax credit if you have a provincial benefit to raise the Canada Disability Benefit to match what the GIS is, to take into indiv account individuals' income, not families' income, mm -hmm. and to uh, get rid of the uh, cancelling it at 65 part. Right. Yeah. Right, because disabilities don't end at 65. There's not a yeah. stop saying it. Okay, well, your yeah, disability is now gone. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> magic, okay? It's like a unicorn. It's just poof. <laughs> <laughs> and because we're mentioning petitions, I wanted to bring up Mike Maurice's petition that expires on Saturday, I believe it is. Right, yes. Petition E4993, and it's to fully fund the CDB to elevate all Canadians with disability out of poverty, moving with the urgency seen with the measures such as the CERB. 
Um, ensure that the enrollment has nothing to do with the DTC and that it's based on individual income, not household income. <laughs> oh, what's the other one? Payback payments. Oh, provide back payment eligible to CDB recipients to the time of royal assent. Protect Retro. CBD recipients from private insurance and government clawbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's like the theme, the mm -hmm. theme that we've been talking about. It's uh, making sure that uh, the DTC is not a requirement, uh, a stumbling block. And that was what Mike Maurice had um, they in Huma. They actually had said, agreed with him that, yes, yeah. we agree. And he was and so like proud. every advocate that went there said, don't just use that. You need to have multiple qualifiers. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not they a do. problem that there are DCCs in there. Just yeah. That yeah. It shouldn't just be the DTC. Yeah. yeah. It shouldn't be Yeah, to, to qualify for it. And, and the part that really makes me mad, which I'm, I'm sure Mike must, Mike must have been just foaming out the mouth because they agreed with him. Saying yeah, oh yeah, 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 no problem. And what did they do? They do the. I guess the, the problem is that the people that were agreeing with it aren't the people that actually got to make the decision on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your input, but we'll do something else now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not going to mention her name, but you have a lawyer on here sometime. Have you ever asked that lawyer about like maybe why there's never any law, um, any suing the government for what they're doing to the PWD people? Like human rights violations. Well, I I can tell you that that I have actually tried to uh, seek a lawyer. Uh, this is go this is going back maybe, I don't know, probably five years ago now, because uh, mm -hmm. I I've put I've tried to do uh, I think it's four four big um, human rights complaints uh, through the um, tribunal, and. Uh, and I failed each time, but then I, but then I, I tried to reach out to, I've tried to reach out to lawyers, and and when I did that, and tried to explain my case of like, this is discriminatory, this these clawbacks, their response right away was, go away, Neil, stop talking, Neil, and and they, and this is the same. I should I should say. Like this, this is the class, the class lawyers that were that were responsible. Remember, for uh, back in it was uh, twenty, was it twenty nine? Oh, actually, no, it was uh, tw sorry, it was 2015. 2015, hmm. The class lawyers for the uh, child. It was when the when the BC Liberals were still in power, mm -hmm. and it was for the uh, the member the child the child uh, the child benefit clawback. Or right. the um for for divorced for divorced parents, you know the um any any child benefits that came from 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 a divorced parent were, were clawed back, and mm -hmm. and it was the class lawyers that took that took it on and and they and they won. So I I went to the, the same class lawyers and I told them my case and they're like, go away Neil, stop talking Neil. Oh, and and, and yeah. So Why? It, it, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't know, but it was, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I know I mean, you can't do a human rights um, lawsuit without being approved by the human rights. So because you weren't approved, maybe that's why. But I mean, yeah. Why can't you guys ask that lawyer if she knows of a way or somebody who might start a lawsuit just on the rates? Yeah. Nothing else, just the rates. Just the rates, right. yeah. If she has any advice. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I mean, again, to to go back to a, like the main sticking point that I've always had is like, if you if you were to tie disability payments, support payments, to the fact that a person has a disability, and have that be the only criteria, it's like if you have a disability, you're entitled to X. And that's it. There's no, there's no like, there's no like uh, gray area of like, you know, well, if this happens, then we'll cut you off. If this happens, we'll... it's like, if you have a disability, you're entitled to X. So basically make it a pension. Like, you know, if you have a disability, you're entitled to this amount and there's no, there's no gray area. There's no if, ands, or buts. You get this because you have a disability, you get this and end a story and, and make it that. 
because then you know what then it's a fair system because then there's no like uh I've disabled versus disabled of you deserve a you deserve a uh this and you deserve that you deserve this and you deserve that a stratification you deserve a bus, of, you deserve a bus pass but you don't yeah yeah all the yeah. all these little stupid rules of of rewards and punishments of like well, this group of PWD deserve a reward, and this group of PWD deserve a, deserve a punishment of a clawback. You know, yeah. it's, you I know here in Ontario, there's actually two lawsuits going on right now. There's one on Doug Ford canceling the UBI pilot because mm -hmm. uh, oh Rick, yeah, because uh, the uh, the the Liberals before he got in had started a pilot program for UBI, mm -hmm. which was going to pay like nineteen hundred dollars a month, and there was like four thousand people receiving it, I guess. Yes, he, yes. He canceled it like as soon as he got in office, even though he said he was going to let the pilot run out. Yeah, I I remember yeah. hearing about that. Jeffrey is that uh, he had agreed with the other previous government before he got in, and he said yes, I'll keep it going. And then the minister who who was in charge of the disability um, had said, oh well, it wasn't working. Uh, it the pilot wasn't working, so they had to cancel it. Well, what the minister didn't realize that BC was studying what was going on in Ontario. Ontario said, oh, yeah, it's not working. Well, I guess BC said, well, I guess we better pull the plug on it. It's not working. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, man. It's like, uh, yeah, how convenient. How convenient. How convenient. The other one, <laughs> the, the other one is against yeah. Developmental Services Ontario. Basically, you can be approved for this program, and then they put you on a wait list and then like they can't tell you how far you're down on that wait list or when you're going to get called oh. to like get your supports. And there's people that have been on this wait list for like five more years and they still haven't started to get their services. Oh, and this man. lawyer has been trying to fight them since 2018. And they, oh, wow. they, they just now got approval from the Supreme Court not to cancel the, the lawsuit. <laughs> so mm. I guess they're oh. going forward with it now. Because he yeah. keeps trying to get him to cancel the lawsuit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. One judge says, oh, go forward. Another judge says, no, throw it out. And they mm, took it yeah. all the way to the Supreme Court. And they said, no, no throwing it out. Yeah. Six billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wish you'd ask that lawyer if she's got any advice. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's it's a good yeah. idea. We should try that again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I did actually ask. I kind of broached this. I didn't want to put them on the spot, but I, I remember oh, I did ask. Advice. I did ask, but it was kind of, I could tell they didn't really want to go there. So yeah, but hmm. but we we could we could ask uh, off the show maybe one time. Have yeah. you tried that arch disability law or whatever? I don't yeah, know if they're I've all through Canada, them. but I know they're in Ontario for sure. Mm -hmm. and they take mm -hmm. disability cases. Yeah, but I'm not sure if they just take cases of denial or like fighting for, like to fix things. Yeah, like a class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I really think we need a disability poverty T-shirt to go viral. Yeah. But I don't know anybody who would sponsor that. <laughs> your your face, Brent, on a T-shirt. Yeah. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that, that indigenous t-shirt that really worked for them and that's hmm. what we need to happen we need people to get rid of this stigma that we're all drug addicts yeah, like, yeah. i don't know i don't even know when the last time i heard them ever say the word physically disabled yeah, I know. I haven't I either. These yeah. Yep. They never talk about the C According to Doug Ford, we're just bums collecting checks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. It's Cheats, varmints, and deadbeats. But he, he lives in a bubble world, though. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing. The government, they, they live and they don't see reality of lived experience of what people go through. Yeah, I mean, the policymakers, the ones who, who sit there and they, oh, this is what we feel is best for people. And now there's a lot of advocacy groups out there, too, that are really upset because now the government didn't do with what they said they were going to do. And some yeah. of them are going, uh oh, uh oh, disability without poverty. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. Some yeah. of them are going, oh, boy. Um, hmm. I don't know how naive they can be. Like, I saw this coming a long time ago. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I saw it, too. Yeah. I, I, um, I saw there was um, writing on the wall 
quite a while ago, um, I was in contact with, uh, with a few people from um, from a couple of the organizations and the one that you just you mentioned, uh, MJ. Um, and I said the same thing. Um, the government's got to get this right. I don't know, like who is a who who is at their table. But I said um, I'm the hearing numbers that- really should have been in the legislation. Yeah. None of this, so we're going to do it part of the regulations. Because yeah. regulations can be easily changed. Or if it's yeah. in the legislation, they would have to vote on that to change it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, I knew that there was going to be something that wasn't going to uh, go right with that. Um, I remember, was it Sonia? What, what you, you know, your famous saying, I'll believe it when it's in my bank account. Yeah. And I said, well, Sonia, I said, well, I mean, you know, we, we got to keep up hope, right? She goes, Right, but it, I'll believe it when it's in my bank account. And she says, "I don't think it's going to happen." Um, and she called I'm it out. Find a job. She she called it out years ago, and I said, "Oh, I mean, yeah, you I mean you might be right, but that's just hope that they're going to do it." I right. was mildly optimistic at the beginning there, but yeah. that went downhill yeah. every time. Like something they yeah. told us was going to happen didn't yeah. happen when it was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted it to be good. I wanted but it to be good. Make us go back to work. Is yeah, but I remember remember in the uh, Trudeau show, where she used to call it the Trudeau show. He uh, Trudeau would come out of his. Uh, um, of his little retreat area every morning, right? You see on the news hour, he'd be coming out of his cottage and uh, and he would basically give an announcement saying, okay, so we're going to be giving out CERB. And the people on the last of the comments, the last of the comments with people with disabilities. So when he gave me that, that indication, I thought, well, okay, so the help's going to be coming out. And that's when Carla Quantrill, we go back memory lane, Carla Quantrill, introduced that bill c-35 way back when and the next day boom snap election Mm -hmm. it got introduced in the house first reading and then it collapsed Mm -hmm. and then oh we have to go back to the drawing board so that bill c-35 it just it died it just that was a whole another year where they could have worked on it and proved it and what did they do they introduced the exact same bill with no improvements nothing yeah no, they yeah. just give it a new, new new paint job, a new number. That's it. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. CDB coming into force? They yeah. actually going to wait till the very last minute on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. And and that then the told DWP right there. Yeah, and then there's a disability emergency response benefit, and but then the uh, the finance minister says, "Oh well, we can't do everything <laughs> if we come out with dirt." So that reminds me, there was one other thing I wanted to mention on here today. Yeah. I would really love it if a lot of us hit them with a petition in September. Jeffrey told me we can have them started all throughout the summer. If we can get 50 people even to start a petition, collect Hmm. 500 signatures, that is it, and have them presented in September all at the same time, right before the fall economic statement. Yeah. yeah. One of them to be derb again because they kept yep. the use that nothing about us without us. Well, they've proven they're not doing that. So mm-hmm. let's give us derb. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? Well, well, the excuse on the finance minister was, oh well, if we give derb, then it's going to delay the Canada disability benefit. But you already did that. <laughs> they already delayed it. So we need I, another I, derb one, and we need people to start petitions. Yeah. And you only need five yeah. supporters to start a petition it's really and a, an MP to support it. And even if your MP doesn't agree with it, he has to support it. That's the rules. And that's why I have a conservative supporting mine. <laughs> right. Yeah. That'd be something to work even on. Even you two. Could you two start one? One of them being Derb? Yeah. 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 Okay. And maybe Sonia. I don't see you there. Sonia. Show me the money. Sonia. Come on, yeah. Sonia. Will you start a petition? <laughs> They need to be presented in September. So just make them for like 60 days. Get 500 mm-hmm. signatures. That's all you got to do. And they're super yeah. easy. Do you, know, do you guys know how to start one? Uh, <laughs> there's that one website. <laughs> yeah, so you go yeah. into our comments. It says create a web. Uh, create. And you can look at previous ones to mm-hmm. outline what you want to say. Like go to previous scenes. You, you can take ours and reword it. Yeah. It, right. does, it, just, it just has to be di- slightly different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But I really, really like another Derb one coming out in September, and you can only okay. do one at a time. And Jeffrey and I both have one going already. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll work on that. I'll I'll get yeah. it going. But I'll, well, I'll all talk. Your people, guys. all your panelists that are normally on here, That's all right. of them, can they please do get one? them to 
you know, we'll call it, we'll call it, we'll call it the PWD we'll, we'll allies make them swamped with petitions. <laughs> all about the candidate disability benefit. I'd love to see them hit with fifty in September. <laughs> yeah, fifty yeah. target. We have to be a pain in uh, their butts. It's the only way they're going to. About six million <laughs> billion. Well, that'd be better, but I don't see that happening. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that it is doable. It is doable. I think we just have to just get it done. This just... leg it, get him to do one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I always say, what, what if you, that if you need somebody movie? to be just one of the five supporters, you can message me. I'll be one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we've already got some already lined up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Uh, I want to. I want to thank uh, both of you for coming on today. Um, this has been great, and um, definitely uh, we'll. Uh, we'll do a follow up uh, very soon, and um, we'll get that uh, new uh, petition uh, made up and uh, get it uh, get it out there. And and we should say uh, we did have some technical issues today. Yeah, uh, which is uh, why but... it's what which is why it's releasing uh, later as a um, as a non live uh, segment is mm -hmm. something to do with the Google today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Google, but, Google just didn't want to cooperate. But Google did not want me to launch live today. So no. <laughs> if if I was a conspiracy theorist, I'd say Trudeau doesn't want people to hear what we got to say. <laughs> maybe, maybe no. Yeah, yeah. But you know, here's here's the uh, here's the card, and uh, you want to uh, reach out, and uh, definitely we'll get you all set up. If you want to be a sponsor, you want to come on the show. Uh, definitely I'll make sure this is straight. There we are. Yeah. Right. I look forward to signing all your petitions. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and reach out. Yeah, and uh, we we'll get to get it all lined up for petitions. Um, and uh, yeah, derb is the word. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So okay. one of you two do a derb one. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll yeah we'll, we'll get it going. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. See you later.